We are at Slow Gallery. Ah, next surprise. <laughs> um, and we are talking. Okay, so James, Dan, like this is the right, unknown so, artist. Yeah. So I'll, <laughs> what you prefer. I'll explain it. So it's it's pretty simple. My name is James Daniel O'Donnell Jr. and I'm Irish, obviously, of Irish descent. Anyway, um, I didn't even know my first name was James until I was seven years old. <laughs> That's okay. hysterical. So I was always, always gone by Danny, and okay. and I, of course, I went to a parochial school, so uh, Daniel. they called one of the nuns called James O'Donnell. I looked around and go, Oh, there's another O'Donnell in here. So, uh, then I found out that that was me. So, but for my business, which I've been a contractor for over 40 years, as well general as a photographer, contract. general contractor, as well as a photographer, I decided to use my first name rather than my middle name as my business name because it's a little more um, professional. Sound, yeah, professional sounds more biblical, I guess. I don't okay. Know what with, but, um, so I've, I've been using James O'Donnell Company for my construction and James D Photography. Okay. So with the D for Dan. So, um, but everybody that gets to know me knows me as Dan. Okay. You know, so that's what I go with. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna refer to him as Dan. There you go. <laughs> um, so, tell me, how long have you been doing photography? Um, I've actually been doing it as a hobby pretty much most of my life. Uh, I started as a kid. Um, Still have the camera I bought or my dad bought for me at Disneyland in 1960. Wow, that's and, cool. What yeah, kind is it? It's a little one of those little spy cameras. Oh, you know, it's in a little yellow case, and, and I actually have the prints from it. Too. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it is cool. So, um, but it's just photography has always intrigued me. It's always been fun to capture a moment. You know? Oh yeah. And um, as I got older, of course, like I said, I, I was in the military, and I, I bought good camera equipment when I was overseas because I could get it for a good price. Right. And I took film cam film photography up until digital started to um, become rule the world. Yeah, to yeah. Become more of a, a thing. In fact, my I remember my last trip to the Southwest that I took, where I took half my pictures with film and half my pictures with digital just just to okay, see the difference. You know, was, I wanted to make that transition and um, of course at that time the film turned out much better because the digital was a very small recording so, oh, right um, but um, I not compared to what there. they are now not no yeah no, nothing yeah. like they are and probably when when the first um, DSLRs came out digital single lens reflex I uh, started just transitioning completely from film and so now uh, like a lot of photographers around I primarily do uh, the digital although I still have some uh, large frame format uh, cameras that I use once in a while for specific things yeah so it, it's um, the thing I like about digital photography which got me more into professional mode was the fact that I had more control over the processing. Oh, so, yeah. you know, using using the computer to be able to put out what I want to put out and what I what I see right. um, in my vision of the photograph. Right. Because so, there's only so much editing really you can do with a film. There if if you do your own um, dark room. Right. Um, and, and some photogra photographers do, they love the dark room. I love the digital darkroom, but right. I never really did like the chemicals and all the stuff okay. you had to do. So I've done it, and I did it mainly black and white. I never did color. Okay. Uh, and I'm a colorist. I love color. And yeah, I think you've seen some of my stuff. Yes. You know, it's primarily very yes. standout. Oh. So, oh. Um, but yes, it, I was in love when I, I was like, <laughs> oh, I put his website on here. So yes, I, I couldn't get out of it. I, yeah, yeah, it was lovely. It, it's and, fun. And yeah. you're digital artwork too so I right. love and I love that that's a beautiful thing about digital right, right is that you can really take a photo mm -hmm. and and then Manipulate it can become it. a yeah and it become part of something else right, right? so I love that I, I do love that about the, the format I often get asked when I go to shows and stuff um, are those photographs or are they paintings because mm -hmm. yeah, if I put if I put one of my 
um, abstract, say, on a canvas, it, it kind of looks like a painting. And that's, that's the idea. Right. But, you know, I don't put the time and effort into it that a painter might put into it. And it's not an original. I could print all day long if I wanted to. Right. You know, so it, that's, that's a nice thing about photography. Yeah. Um, I truly appreciate, you know, uh, artists that, that use oils and, and acrylic and all the other uh, mediums. Water, you know, um, because it's, I know what's involved with that. Yeah. Now, I, I spent some time doing processing on a computer. But I still have the original image, so right. I can always start all over again right. if I want. Yeah. Really, so, yeah. Um, yeah. It's yeah, never it's really, really messed up. No, not really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, these, actually, some of the times you mess up, Super you come up with, yeah, it's forgiving, but you also come up with something you didn't plan. Right, on. which is always fun. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I love happy accidents. Yeah. Those, <laughs> some of those are my favorite. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, great, we're going with that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, how did you like transition into uh, maybe more professional avenue? Um, well, first off, being a contractor, I was I'm a, always been a uh, on site contractor, so I actually do the work, a lot of the work. And as I get older, you know, it's like you know, this is this is hard on the body, hey, and, you know, yeah. you know and, and all that. Just a little. And I've always enjoyed the photography, and as I got to the point where I thought, you know what, I I could probably make a living at this, you know. I, I decided to start shifting over, you know, kind of go into a retirement with right. you know, doing that. And um, I'm still working construction, uh, and primarily that happened because of um, COVID. Yeah. Because when when COVID hit, all my shows just died. Right. And and I've I actually have some certificates of. Um, that I do work for the company. So I, I'm a factory trained installer for endless okay. pools, which, which is a swim spa. So they give me a lot of work. It's all referral work. And, and during so, COVID, everybody was oh yeah, like, oh, I mean, I'm, home improvement. Right now, I'm so, so backed up. It's just, you know, no it's doubt. hard for me to get out and do the photography. Mm -hmm. Although I have a full list of shows I'm doing this summer. So, okay. um, and I enjoy doing all that, you know, so. Yeah. And I, I kind of transitioned into doing a lot of weddings and okay. events because I like love doing people, people, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's been fun, so um, I just kind of got into that, and and then of course you know I could sit at home when I don't feel like going anywhere or doing anything and play on the computer all day and, right. and come up yeah. with whatever I want to come up with. Create. Yeah. And I enjoyed printing, you know, putting the art out there on the wall, yeah. so you can, rather than just having it on the computer yeah you know. and that is a benefit I think I really love I appreciate that um, artists here in slow have a well and really anywhere right because right. you can have space wherever you're at so but I, I appreciate that we have a place right. for us to put our stuff up exactly right exactly. like sometimes you know because how much stuff can you have in the studio so you have yeah. it all stored on your, well, I, your computer. Yeah. <laughs> but for us, right, it's like how many sculptures can you have yeah. sitting around? How many, you well, know, and, you got them all stacked up against the wall. And how and, bulky, you know, they get. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, sometimes you just really are limited on space. And right. so, like, that's another benefit of a digital right. format, right, is that it doesn't, it requires nothing but a laptop. So exactly. Sorry. And for me to print anything. Now, I, I print a lot of stuff up to 24 inches. Uh, wide yourself okay. myself okay. Um, I don't do the metals because okay. I'm not set up for doing that um, but I do print on canvas I do print on paper okay and I, I sell a lot of those um, and I enjoy that because then I can refine and then when I refine it on my computer slash printer I can then send it off and have good size big, right. big stuff done and, and you know fill that nice. void so um, yeah, it's really nice. It kind of fills everything, you know, yeah. all these different aspects of it. So. Are you involved in any of the like collective group of photographers here or artists here? Uh, well, I'm in part of this group. Okay. Yeah, my stuff's hanging on the back wall down there. So. Okay. Um, and, like, do you hang out with other artists, other photographers? Well, Bob's a good friend of mine. Right, I saw yeah. that. Who we didn't get his interview. I know. <laughs> I, I can't even tell you how sad and disappointed I am about it. I can't. I'm, even. I'm glad you didn't because I hate to follow Bob. Bob was such a good, so good interview. I know. I bet it was. No, he, he, I'm so he knows sad. His stuff. Yeah, so. I'm so sad. He's but, just kind of an interesting guy. Oh yeah, it's very interesting. Right, so yeah. I met Bob. I'm going to get him to do one on Zoom, but 
I'm really sad because I enjoyed the in person. Yeah. Him, but. Yeah. No, he's 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 a he's a boring teacher. You know, yeah, he it, just has a super gentle spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah, he knows how to, to work with people and um, he teaches a lot of people photography and, and yeah and he's you know I met him I he was I don't think when he first started that he had had much mm -hmm. photo, photography experience whatsoever yeah. Yeah. and he started just before I believe he he retired from teaching yeah that's what he said yeah so yeah. Um, but I mean he's he's in my opinion um, in some ways he surpassed me by a long shot you know what and what he does and how he follows you know right his, his stuff so um and he you know i i'm kind of all over the place you know i like taking all sorts of things i mean i'll i'll shoot flowers one day and i'll shoot race cars the next right. you know i mean it's just just how i am but he, he gets in and focuses on certain things right. and can um he's a great photographer and i don't want to talk about bob all day but i know right <laughs> like really <laughs> okay so in that contrast, so mm -hmm. you've been doing it most of your life, like hobby, right. per, uh, professional. So in that, what would you um, offer as advice to uh, someone who is like just starting? Yeah, one of the biggest, one of the biggest. Or on that verge of like hobby, right. professional hobby. For well, if, if you're a hobbyist and you know the, the, some of the finer points of photography, Transitioning just means getting out and marketing yourself, okay, okay? And, and getting people to, to see your stuff and, and artists love to do and, that. Yeah, like, not really. I mean, you know, I <laughs> I'm lucky in that I married a woman who is very. You know, she's one of those that walks into a party and everybody. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I came out of my shell because of her oh, many nice. years ago, um, and it's uh, it's it it takes sidewalk work to sell your stuff you know you need to get out and get people to see it you need to have a story with it you need to um then people love the story and that's how i sell most right. of my stuff is when i explain you know what i did or how we did it and right that. And, um, and of course you know all photographers pretty much know even artists know you know when you go and you paint something you do something you're there. You're immersed in it, and and you be, you create you get a story from doing it. So um, whatever. So yeah, sometimes it is. tells you the story. Yeah, sometimes right. it does. That's correct. Yeah. So um, anyway, I would suggest that if if you're amateur and you want to go pro, that's the main thing. If you're don't know much and you want to just start getting into it, you need to learn the basics. Okay. You know how so take how some classes yeah. like right. Okay. And a lot of photography nowadays is not just taking the picture, it's the processing of the right. picture. So you need to learn that as well as, you know, right. otherwise you're going to be pretty much molded into the snapshot category. So, right. Yeah. Now there, I mean, there are some photographers out there that do wonderful jobs um, without doing much processing. Right. But they're, they're shooting a certain type of thing. Right. So like... Um, portrait photographers they have the lights set up they have things there right. ready to go and you know if they do it right there's not much touching up to do right yeah. you know, so um, but when you're doing the kind of landscapes and stuff I do where I bring in light from everywhere right it's a lot of playing with that light in the process how fun is that it is it's a lot of fun I mean I can I can go out on a cloudy day and make a picture look like it's bright and sunny with shadows right by the processing I do um, and knowing that, going into yeah. an area, you can take pictures on a day when you norm normally most people wouldn't. wouldn't. Yeah, yeah right. you can come up with good shots. Right. So, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so tell us where you're going to be exhibiting or showing stuff. You said later this summer. Right. Yeah. So, well, I, I kind of do the craft show okay. circuit. Okay. So I do like art in the park down in uh, Pismo yeah. Beach. Okay. The first Sunday of the month, starting in May. And then um, I'm also doing the Art in the Park in Morro Bay. There's three of them. Which one are you doing? I'm doing all three of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's Memorial Day, Labor Day, and Fourth of July. Right. And they're three yeah. day shows. Yeah. So I do those. I'm thinking um, about doing the Fourth of July one. Oh, yeah. Three days it's is a, a good long time. It is a long time, and, and it, but it's a good show. I, I haven't done that one yet. I actually signed up for it for 2020. Oh. <laughs> um, so you're holdover? Yeah. Well, um, 
Like basically, they refunded the money, and then 2021 was still kind of iffy, so I didn't sign up for it. I just did the art in the parks down right. in Shell Beach. Uh, but this year, I went ahead and signed up for all three of them. Yeah. yeah. I haven't signed up yet, but I'm, I'm like, I mean, committing three days to being out there yeah. by myself. But I think if I can, if I can get somebody to come in and sit with me. Well, generally, you can have me. One of the one of your neighbors there, they they'll watch your booth if you need to use the restroom. I know, restroom, but it's still things. like I know. it's funner to have other somebody else. Yeah, I mean, there's time. just the help setting up is you know. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, that's right there. So that's cool. And Willie, you, you didn't have any of those on your website when I looked. Uh, I have a calendar. I think they're on the calendar. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Maybe I missed that. If you just there's a calendar on the first page. If you go to the calendar. It shows my events in Google okay. Calendar, so I put oh, on okay, gotcha. it shows what's going on. In fact, I, I think I have this show marked off for the month of okay. May. So, um, yeah, that helps me too. <laughs> right. I remember what's coming up. So, but yeah, it's a lot of fun, and I, and I do local. I don't, I don't go outside the area. I okay. Just, I don't feel like traveling to go do shows. Um, if if somebody if I knew of a show somewhere where I had family or something I might do it, but um, I, right because you have some place to stay yeah. and it's just again being a full time contractor as well as a full time photographer it just doesn't leave a lot of time so no, yeah, it doesn't right. especially now <laughs> so yeah very so. cool is there anything else you have uh, um, any words of wisdom quotes yeah uh, I think everybody should do photography. <laughs> <laughs> And, there and, should be a, no other art on the planet <laughs> no, except no, no. photography. No, I, I don't believe that whatsoever <laughs> because I, I truly enjoy art. So, uh, in fact, when I was a child, I was born and raised here in San Luis Okay. So, uh, when I was a child, my grandmother, who was a retired teacher, and my grandfather, who was a retired postmaster for San Luis Obispo, oh. um, both, my grandmother was from San Francisco. She was born and raised there, as were her, was her mother, and her mother was a 49er okay they're in the gold very art. cool yeah. but um so they would take me up to the art museums in san francisco the Dion, the museum of art the, you know all these different places and of course back then i, I still remember to this day a modern art exhibit um, at the time i didn't know it was a modern art exhibit but it was an art exhibit and kind of like walking in the gallery next door here oh, okay. um, with a big long hall and all the way down the hall was this art and they were basically, I don't know, probably 24 by 24 framed um, pieces of art. And all I remember them being was white space, black circle, black space, white circle, white space, smaller black circle, black, <laughs> black square. It was like, and I, and I walked down and I looked at these and I just kind of asked my grandma, I remember her saying, is this really art? Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. And she says, well, that's okay, Danny. It's, some of this stuff is hard to understand. <laughs> I said, okay. So to this day, I still don't understand it, but and I don't know who the artist was. You right, know, doesn't even matter. Either, but, um, it was going up to those museums, especially the Dion, because the Dion's had more of a history museum. Right. Um, it, was, it was enjoyable for me to be close to, I mean, oh, yeah. I'm close to this artist right now when right. I'm sitting here because right. this is something that came out of their right. mind and that their psyche. And, um, so you get a feel for it and then to actually see it. You know, yeah. Anyway, it's always been But great. everybody should be a photographer. Yeah, well, <laughs> pretty basic. <laughs> well, I do think that there are, there's some simplicity to it, right? right. Um, compared to other. Well, it's something types of art. everybody can do nowadays. I mean, well, pretty much everybody sure. has a cell phone. And yeah. cell phones have cameras on them. Yeah, not me. Um, I, I don't. I, I I was telling Bob this earlier. I'm like, I don't really feel like I get. I'm not a good photographer. You know, the thing about photography, just like any other part of this form of art, whether you do processing or not, um, a good photograph says something to you. Right. And if you're if you're out and you're on a trip and you're just taking pictures of buildings and whatever, um, instead of just doing that, think about what it is you're trying to catch, what it is that moves you about the building, because you're going from a 3D right. to a 2D, right. and it, when you want to um, convey that to somebody else, you need to be able to do it in two 
2D. So um, if it's if it's some particular point of the architecture, shoot that point and, and shoot a couple different angles and zoom in and zoom so out. So be more intentional. Yeah, I mean, because digital photography, you can take a thousand pictures and throw them away if you want. You know, right. Just, yes. You know, it doesn't cost anything. So. Right. Um, so I think that's it. You know, to me, photography is about the story. You know, so. I feel like um, art in general. It, it, it conveys something. Yeah, yeah. It, it tells, it speaks to you, tells right. a story. Right. Um, yeah, so that I, I'm a firm believer in that. So I always want to know. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I decided to do the interviews, right? Is right. because I needed to know the story. Right, right? I there you go. I needed to know the people. I needed right. to know who made this and like, who are they, right? Because right? then I, I feel like I connect more in with the art when I am the story, the right. person. Right, uh, well, I, like I said earlier, when I go to shows and I'm standing there in front oh, of my art yeah. and people look at it, I'll, I'll ask them, you know, can I help you? Or do you want to look? What do you see? Or whatever. Yeah. And then I, they, if they act like they're interested, then I will get into the story to actually convey to them what I saw. And that's usually when I sell something. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. Because I've, now they go home and they can say, yeah, I talked to the artist. Right. And, and here's the, yeah, right. I think, I think it's super important. Right. And if you have a website and you put your stuff on the website, don't just put your stuff on the website. Put the story there. Put the story too. Now I'm, I fall short of that in a lot of ways. You websites are hard to that. manage. Yeah. Huh? I mean, websites are hard to manage. They That's are. It's a lot they, of stuff. They take a lot of things. But it, you know, I've, I'm, I'm kind of seeing. You know, I, I have so much stuff on my website because I have a lot of galleries you can't even see that are wedding. I bet. Yeah. Um, uh, the, I'm, I'm realizing sometimes less is more. <laughs> You know, so putting putting less in Don't there. Don't put and, everything. Yeah, in. put a story yeah, to maybe, it and kind yeah. of get people to. Um, well, for instance, just recently I sold a photo on uh, Fine Art America. It's a website. Okay, right, okay. yeah. Um, and it, I got the notification, and then I went to the photo to look at it, and I realized I wrote the story on that one. And it, what it is is the Hugo Hotel, which is up okay. in, was, up, was up in San Francisco. It's not there anymore. Right. But it had a large piece of art that was done on it. And I went, on a trip, I went up with Bob Canepa. Um, I took a picture of that hotel because there were no cars in it. And it's been, look up the Hugo Hotel okay. and go find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, because I had that story on there, I, I actually probably the reason I sold the piece of art. Because you put the story there. The story was there. That, Oh wow, and it's quite yeah. a story when you yeah. when you do the history of that whole. It, the the art was called uh, defenestration. Oh, it was furniture what a great word. coming out the window. It was oh, this, yeah, this yeah, artist yeah, yeah. had furniture coming out the windows and stuff. Very cool. um, yeah, it was pretty cool. So anyway, um, it, yeah. it helps to tell the story. Yeah, I agree with that. That. Uh... Thanks, Molly. <laughs> Anyway, all right. All right. So, Thank you. You bet. Dan, Thanks for interviewing. Yes. For <laughs> being here you, you bet. and you chatting with me. I sure appreciate your time. No problem. I appreciate it. Go too. look Thank at you. his website. It is amazing. Thank so, you. All yeah. right. All right.